Good morning, or depending on when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name's Ross, and as always, told out of voice of radio. So today, well look, we are we're at the release of Lost Origin. It's either just about to be released or just been released. Depends when this video exactly goes up. But Friday the 9th of September is the official release date for Lost Origin. And look, every time there's a new set, I bring you a buy list. So I'm definitely going to bring you a buy list for this set. And the usual rules apply here, ladies and gentlemen. I am telling you the cards which I think you need to have in your binder so you can basically make any deck when you get the attacker. Yes, we all know that Giratina V-Star is the best card in the set and is going to be amazing. But you're either going to play Giratina or you're not. So you know whether you need to buy that card. I'm not going to be playing Giratina in tournaments. I'm not going to spending out for a free fall list. I am, however, going to be testing Delphox V very heavily. Yes, I know. So I'm going to be going and getting a couple copies of them. And I've already got myself a full playset of Hasui and Arcanine because I am so excited about that card and I'm going to be playing it. So with attackers, my theory always is you know what decks you want to play. Go pick up the attackers. My thing is, which cards do you need so you're ready to build any deck out there and ready to have all the techs you need to pop into any deck. Uh, now, there are a few stage twos which I do think are kind of interesting. But I'm not putting them on the list because they're stage twos. So, for instance, we've got the beautiful I let you draw until you've got six cards in hand. Good, but it's a stage two. We've got the Ore Beetle, which has got a really nice ability, lets you attach free energy cards from your opponent's discard pile to your opponent's Pokemon in any way you like. Really nice ability to try and hurt them with attacks that do damage depending on how much energy they've got. But again, it's on a stage two. There is a Kingdra with a really nice ability that lets you have either player shuffle their hand and put it on the bottom of their deck. And if they put any cards on the bottom of their deck, they draw four. And then there is a Hasuian Gudra, not the V-Star, just the regular, with the ability Metal Lodging that prevents all damage done to each of your basic Pokemon with any Metal Energy attached by attacks from your opponent's Pokemon V. Useful ability, but on Stage 2, I don't think it's very techable. So with all of that borne in mind, what did make the list... Well, we've got Parasect. Parasect's got the ability Lethargy Spores, and what that will do is when you evolve into it, you can make both active Pokemon asleep and poisoned. You'll then hopefully retreat out of it or take advantage of it because you're prepared. It's a really nice ability to hurt your opponent. I think Pyroar is a very nice Pokemon coming in here because during Pokemon checkup, four damage counters go on your opponent's burned Pokemon rather than two. Any burn deck you play in the future is going to want to play this card. Now, Kyurem and VMAX, I generally try not to recommend getting Vs and VMAX, etc. Because they can get expensive. But Kyurem and VMAX has got the ability Glaciated World that lets you discard the top card of your deck. If it's a water energy, attach it to one of your Pokemon. And we've got enough ways to figure out if there is or isn't a water energy or to try and fix it. So, in Water Decks moving forward, this is going to be a really nice option for accelerating energy, and it's one that I'm going to have in my binder ready for if it does. Now, Rotom V has the ability Instant Charge, lets you draw three cards, and then your turn ends. And I really like this, and I think you need a copy of this hanging around just in case. And I know we've got very similar kind of abilities that end your turn on other Pokemon. I get that, but, you know, we've got things like Zashium that lets you draw free cards and attach any metal energy, but that's going to be rotating soon, so that doesn't really count. We do have the Zamazenta V that will survive the next two rotations that lets you discard your hand and draw five cards. This is just an alternative to it. You can go Zamazenta or you can go this. My point is... This is a really good ability that you may wish to pop in a deck at some point. So I think you need one sitting there just in case. Now I also think you need two to four copies of Electric. It paralyzes your opponent's Pokemon on a coin flip when you evolve into it. Tell me there aren't some paralysis decks waiting to use this. Now I do think you need four copies of Gengar but not the pre-evolutions. Yes it's a stage two but we're not playing it as a stage two. If it's in your discard pile, you can bench it and put three damage counters on it. So if you need bench Pokemon, this will do it. 
If you need damage bench Pokemon, this will do it. And of course, you can for a single energy put two damage counters on your opponent's active for each of your opponent's bench. That's potentially 10 damage counters for a single energy. This is a card which is going to help an awful lot of decks and I like it very much indeed. Now, I really genuinely believe every single person needs to go and buy a Radiant Gardevoir. Or trade for one, obviously. Because the ability means you take 20 less damage from attacks from your opponent's Pokemon V. It's one of the best Radiant Pokemon's abilities. Remember, you can only play one Radiant Pokemon of any kind in your deck. So you only ever need one Radiant Gardevoir. But this has got a really nice ability. A bunch of people are going to play it. You need it. Now, Sableye is only going to work in Lost Zone decks, but I do think every Lost Zone deck needs two to four copies of it. Because for a single energy, if you've got 10 cards in your Lost Zone or more, place 12 damage counters on your opponent's Pokemon in any way you like. Against Evolution decks, this will basically shut them down because they won't be able to play Basics, and that's kind of hilarious for you and super annoying for them. But it's also just generally really good. If you're playing a Lost Zone deck, consider having this. Speaking of the Lost Zone, Baynet's got a really nice ability. I think you need two to four copies of this. It basically lets you Lost Zone it and then search for a supporter card in your discard pile and put it in your hand. The thing is, Shuppet and Baynet then puts two Pokemon in your Lost Zone. So decks that need to build up your Lost Zone, this is good. Decks that want to recover supporters, this is good. It's just generally good. Now, Comfy you need four copies of. This is basically a new engine coming out of Lost Origin. Let's just look at the top two cards of your deck. One goes to your hand, one goes to your Lost Zone. Yes, there will be games where you hit two super important cards and you have to Lost Zone one of them. This is still a great engine that a lot of decks are going to use. You're going to need four Comfy. It's just the way it is. You're also going to need, I think, one to two Enamorous V. Again, I'm not a huge fan of going and picking up the Vs on release. But it prevents all effects of your opponent's Pokemon's abilities to your Pokemon with any Psychic Energy attached. So if you're playing a Psychic deck or a deck with Psychic Energy, this is phenomenal for stopping all those really annoying abilities. And I think you're going to need one handy. Now what I'm on the fence about here is Aerodactyl V-Star. Because you see, it's, it's the V-Star power that I'm really loving. Because for a single colorless energy, i.e. any deck can use it. It gains an ability that turns off Pokemon V and all their abilities. All their Pokemon V, including VMAX and V-Star, all of their abilities go away. That's great ability, lock. I think you need a copy of this in your binder ready. And I also think you need a couple copies of Barbarical. Super annoying ability on a stage one. Your opponent puts any prize cards they would take into the Lost Zone rather than into their hand, which is hilarious and annoying. Spiritomb is one that I'm looking at as an attacker, but it's also got a really nice ability. If it's knocked out by damage from an attack, search your deck for any card. There are some decks out there that can really use this to set up in the early game. You need a couple copies of Drapion V, because it basically one-hit KOs a Mew V Max for zero energy. Simple as that. And sure, Mew V Max may or may not be good moving forward, blah, blah, blah. It's a... And I think one is too few. I think if you're going to do it, you need to play two. But basically, any deck that's worried about their Mew matchup, whack two Drapion on V in and your matchup gets swung massively. Again, one is probably not enough. You'll need two. But I like Drapion on V. I love it for that. And then one Radiant Hisui and Sneasler. Yes, one of the Radiant Pokemon didn't make the list because it's really an attacker. You're playing it or you're not. But Radiant Hisui and Sneasler is a very good card. Because what this one does is it increases the amount of poison that poison Pokemon take by two. And like we said a minute ago with Burn decks, if, if you're playing a poison deck now or in the future, Radiant Assyrian Sneezer is one you are going to want to play. It's going to be your Radiant Pokemon of choice. It's one to bear in mind. Now, as we move into trainers, I'm going to say four Arc Phone. I'm basically going to say four of every trainer. Because we never know what's going to be good in the future. And obviously I'm leaving off a couple of ones that really aren't needed or ones that are reprints. But generally speaking, these are ones you want to have a playset of. I have seen way too many people running around at tournaments desperately trying to find copies of a trainer card that suddenly become good. But they couldn't buy it two days before the event. This 
the whole point of the buy list is you've got the cards you need in your binder. So if these cards suddenly do get good and you want to play them in decks, you are set up. Uh, Arc Phone lets you switch it with one of your face down prize cards. Good for searching your prizes. Arazu lets you search for free evolution Pokemon without a rule box and then put them into your hand. Good in certain decks for search. Box of Disaster, if it's got a if it's a Pokemon V with full HP knocked out by damage man attack, place eight damage counters. In a one-hit KO format, this could be the absolute difference. Chorus's Experiment is a really nice supporter card. Let's you look at the top five cards of your deck. Three go in your hand, two go in the lost zone. In any lost zone deck, this is great for both draw and filling up your lost zone. Damage Pump lets you move two damage counters from one of your Pokemon to one of your other in any way you like. Really good if you've got Outrage attacks or you need damage on specific Pokemon or even to try and prevent a KO. Fantina, if you've got 10 or more cards in the Lost Zone, means that your Pokemon take 120 less from Pokemon V next turn. And again, in a Lost Zone deck, this can be the absolute difference between being KO'd and being not. So that's kind of cool. Um, Iskan, I'm very much on the fence. It's draw two cards, draw two more if your active Pokemon is a Hisuian Pokemon. But actually, in a Hisuian Pokemon deck, sometimes a pure draw four is going to be useful. Lake Acuity, all your Pokemon with water or fighting energy attacks take 20 less damage. And in some matchups, that's going to save key KOs. Lost City, when a Pokemon is knocked out, put that Pokemon in the Lost Zone instead of the discard pile. And this can be to stop your opponent's Pokemon coming back. Or it can be so your Pokemon go in the Lost Zone so you fill up your Lost Zone faster. Either way, this could be very useful. Lost Vacuum, if you put another card from your hand in the Lost Zone, you can take a tool attached to any Pokemon or a Stadium and put it into the Lost Zone. Again, you could be filling up your Lost Zone or you could be hurting your opponent or maybe both. Mirage Gate, like Comfy a minute ago, is an absolute slam dunk four of. Sure, it's only for Lost Zone decks, but if you've got seven or more cards in the Lost Zone, you search your deck for two basic energy of different types and attach them to your Pokemon. It's a ridiculous card, and especially a few months down the line, this is going to be a pain to get hold of a playset of. Get it sooner rather than later. Misfortune Sisters lets you look at the top five cards of your opponent's deck and discard any number of item cards you find. Could be really good for disruption decks. Panic Mask prevents all damage done to the Pokemon this is attached to by your opponent's Pokemon with 40 HP or less remaining. Again, this is not an every deck, every game kind of card, but in some decks, this is going to be huge. Riley reveals the top five cards of your deck. Your opponent chooses two of them. You discard the others. This one, again, is a real borderline card that you could ignore. But there are going to be some decks that want to fill up your discard pile where this could be really good. Fortin lets you choose a basic Pokemon in your discard pile and twitch it with a basic Pokemon in play. Some decks are really going to take advantage of this. It's one to bear in mind. Toolbox lets you look at the top seven cards of your deck and put any tool card you find into your hand. In any decks revolving around Pokemon tools, this is going to be great. Volo lets you discard one of your bench Pokemon V and all attached cards, taking away potential prizes, etc. So again, this one is one I really think needs to be borne in mind. Wind Up Arm lets you attack even if you're asleep or paralyzed. So maybe you're doing it or maybe you're worried about your opponent doing it. Either way, this is useful. And Gift Energy is a colorless energy. But if it's attached to a Pokemon knocked out by damage from an attack, Draw cards until you've got seven in your hand. So again, Gift Energy is one that I think could end up being moderately useful. So there we go, ladies and gentlemen. The whole list is now up on the screen. And look, I'm not expecting every single person watching this to go and pick up every single one of these cards. There are going to be cards on this list that you disagree with, and that's absolutely fine. Don't get them. There are going to be other cards. Like, if I was looking at this list, I'd be like, mate, everyone needs four copies of a Sui and Arcanine. Come on! So I'm going to go and pick... In fact, I've already picked them up. I'm going to be honest with you. I've already got them. And fun fact, English and Japanese. I've got a playset in both. But my point is, this is basically a list of all the cards you may be wanting to put into decks. I'm not trying to list off all the attackers you're going to need because uh, it's so difficult to figure out what's going to be good in six months' time. I can tell you right now that Giratina is amazing and Gudra looks very promising. But you really want to go and buy a full free line of each and never end up playing them? That's too much money wasted. Figure out what decks you want to play 
and then go and pick up the attackers would be my advice. This is a buy list to make sure you've got everything else you need. And now, ladies and gentlemen, hopefully my work here is done, so it's over to you guys. Tell me what you think about this in the comment section. Tell me which cards you'd add, which cards you take away. Go nuts, but be nice. And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wasi. That's where we talk Pokemon and card games and all kinds of other fun things. And please do consider checking out patreon.com slash ptcgradio. That's where you can support the channel, get weekly bonus podcasts where I tell you all about my adventures and answer your questions. Where uh, there's a Discord you can join and chat. And of course I give shout outs to people like the lovely Arnaldo Tafoya, who is a very lovely person. Thank you for all the support and thank you for being a very lovely person. But by far the most important thing as always... Look after yourselves till next time, would ya? Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching PTCG Radio.